All right, it's my first video of 2018, and to kick things off, I'm doing a special request from Patreon supporter Tyler Parsons, who asked me to review the movie Wizards. And this is a real milestone for this show, because it's the first movie I've ever done from animation pioneer Ralph Bakshi. Don't know who Ralph Bakshi is? Oh, you're in for a treat. Imagine if something like Wicked City fucked a Looney Tunes cartoon, and you'd still only be like halfway there. Wizards is a 1977 animated sci-fi fantasy movie from director Ralph Bakshi. And I can't go any further than that without first explaining just who Ralph Bakshi is. Without going into too much detail, he's kinda like the anti-Disney. Bakshi's of the opinion that animation can not only be for adults, but it should be vulgar, provocative, and weird as hell. Even if you're not a fan of his work, his stuff's almost always at least interesting, and distinctively his since Bakshi is a filmmaker who's always done things his way. With one notable exception, but that's another story. Even if you've never heard of Bakshi, you may have seen some of his stuff without even realizing it. One of his earliest gigs was on the 1960s Spider-Man cartoon, a show that proved it's possible to make people feel like they were tripping on acid using only five frames of animation. There are reports that a bad creature has invaded the Forbidden City. What? what? He also made Fritz the Cat, which was the world's first X-rated animated feature, as well as the first big screen adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. Plus, a lot of people think he made the movie Heavy Metal, even though he actually didn't. Okay, so now that you know who Bakshi is, where exactly does Wizards fit in? Well, after making several controversial adult-oriented films, Bakshi wanted to show people that he could also make a more family-friendly movie. You know, one with things like elves, fairies, magic, violence, Nazi imagery, sexual innuendo. What? He just said this would be family-friendly compared to something like Fritz the Cat. He never said he was making Blue's Clues here. So in 1977, Bakshi made Wizards. Although the title was originally supposed to be War Wizards, but it was changed to avoid people confusing it with Star Wars. Because, you know, wouldn't you think these are totally the same movie? Anyway, we begin the way most family-friendly animated features do, with a nuclear apocalypse. <laughs> The world blew up in a thousand atomic fireballs. Alright, I'm a little curious to see where they go from here, considering they just blew up the world. Is the rest of the movie just a shot of space where the Earth used to be? Okay, actually they explain that millions of years after the apocalypse, most of humanity has been turned into mutants, and that fairies, elves, and dwarves have returned after a long absence and live in peace together in a technology-free land called Montagar. So in contrast to most fantasy movies, which are set in a medieval-style past, this is actually set in a post-apocalyptic future. That's... actually pretty original. Most fantasy movies are restricted to just using magic stuff, but this way Bakshi can throw in things like robots and guns if he wants to. The chicks with the big breasts, though, he was gonna put those in no matter what. So the narration explains that one day a fairy queen gave birth to twins who were also powerful wizards. One good, the other evil. See if you can guess which is which. Avatar. The kind and good wizard. Not to be confused with Avatar The Last Airbender, although I wouldn't be surprised if this movie also had some secret penises in it. The evil brother is named Black Wolf, and I don't blame him for being angry. If I was born without flesh on my arms, I'd be pissed too. After their mom dies, Avatar finally figures out his brother might be evil. Better go straighten him out. When Avatar confronted Black Wolf, he was enraged. It began a furious battle. A furious battle that we couldn't afford to animate, but just take our word for it. Avatar wins, but rather than kill Black Wolf, he lets him go. I'm sure that decision won't come back to bite him in the ass. Cut to 3,000 years later, and ladies and gentlemen, we have animation. The time has come. Kill. Black Wolf sends out some assassins to wreak havoc across the land, which seems to be composed entirely of awesome 70s progressive rock album art. Oh, and did I mention this was Bakshi's attempt to make a more family-friendly movie? <laughs> well, hello, handsome. <laughs> That's right, fairy hookers. Hey, people were gonna rule 34 the characters on DeviantArt anyway. Might as well beat him to the punch. The great thing about these hookers is, if you don't have money, you can just pay him in fairy dust. 
And by that I mean cocaine. The main assassin Black Wolf sends out is called Necron 99, who kinda looks like if you put Marvin the Martian and Gossamer into a blender. One thing's for sure, not a single Keebler elf is safe as long as he's around. I don't know why it took Black Wolf 3,000 years to enact his revenge. Seems like all he had to do was send some guys to go shoot people. Actually, maybe the reason it took so long is because these assassins like taking their sweet time. Come on, Necron, you can pose for a Hawkwind album cover later, you've got work to do. Anyway, we're now introduced to one of the movie's heroes, Weehawk. And if you're wondering which one of these two is Weehawk... Weehawk's the one who isn't fucking dead. It must really suck not being able to use technology when the bad guys have guns. Although, it helps that Necron 99 apparently went to the Imperial Stormtrooper School of Marksmanship. And remember, kids, in a Ralph Bakshi family movie, cute animals sometimes get a fucking arrow through their brain. Well, at least these two get a standard Disney death. <laughs> Just kidding. If Bakshi was gonna kill those two, it would have been way more violent than that. And see? I told you Bakshi was gonna put a dick in this movie! Damn it. Avatar is now an old man, having a meeting with President Mime Fetish Mask here, as well as the President's daughter, Eleanor. They're really late now, aren't they, old wizard? <laughs> Bad magic, isn't it? Huh? Uh, sorry, I, I wasn't listening. I was staring at your fairy tits. Uh, what were you saying? Only Avatar can make me a full-fledged fairy. I don't know, you look pretty full-fledged to me. By the way, if you're wondering if Eleanor's drawn to look like she's cold for the rest of the movie, it's a Ralph Bakshi film, so yes. The President considers arming their troops with technological weapons to protect against Black Wolf, but Avatar reminds him that technology has been outlawed, although I guess jukeboxes don't count as technology? Oh, and if you thought we were done with the opening exposition, uh-uh. There's a lot more where that came from. It helps save on animation costs that way. The narration explains that despite amassing a powerful army, Black Wolf's forces would always get bored or distracted before they could win. They've killed Fritz! They've killed Fritz! Those lousy, stinking yellow fairies! No, actually, Robert Crumb killed Fritz because he didn't like Bakshi's movie adaptation. Joke's on him, though. It still ended up getting a sequel anyway, even if Bakshi had nothing to do with it. So, faced with a dilemma, Black Wolf could either inspire his troops using team-building exercises, or have them dig up old World War II German war machines and create a Fourth Reich. You know, whichever's more convenient. And did I mention this movie has the same rating as Frozen? <laughs> What? Don't look so surprised. This is a 70s PG movie. This was back when the phrase parental guidance suggested actually meant something. I failed you, my wizard. Yeah, you kind of did there, Weehawk. And so, with her father dead, Eleanor's screams echoed throughout Boner Tower. You know, say what you want about the animation, but I wouldn't mind having some of these backgrounds as my computer wallpaper. And I could be mistaken, but I think Black Wolf might be the bad guy. Man, this animation is so trippy it looks like it was filmed inside a power bong. And I must have missed the part of World War II history where the Germans based all their technology on old issues of heavy metal. Oh, and in case you think this movie is getting a little too heavy... Hey, Everything's hey. got a right to live! Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, I've always said movies with strong Nazi imagery would be a lot easier to take if they just had more wacky cartoon sound effects. It will take more than that. I'm sure you're right. All right, time for Black Wolf to inspire the troops. Attention, leaders of tomorrow's master race. Master Race, huh? Well, to me, it looks like somebody pissed in the gene pool. The animation in this movie is a real mixed bag. In some shots, it looks like 70s comic book art put in motion, but other times, it looks like they just splashed paint over footage from old movies, which is not too far from what they actually did. I gotta admit, though, the end result is still pretty trippy. Whether it was intended to be family-friendly or not, this whole thing has Midnight Movie written all over it. In addition to all the old machines they dug up, Black Wolf has another secret weapon up his sleeve. A movie projector? Guns, tanks, bombs, all of them pale next to the awesome power of movie night. Also, what the hell is Black Wolf projecting this on? Oh well, I'll just assume it was the same thing Spider-Man was swinging from. The History Channel footage inspires Black Wolf's troops... 
I guess. And they begin a reign of terror all throughout not Middle Earth. But they're crazy if they think the good guys are going to go down without a fight. For Elfin and Fairyland united we fly. Okay, so they're fucked. And listen, fellas, trench warfare doesn't work very well when you don't have guns. One sure way to know you're watching a Ralph Bakshi movie. Even this guy's pipe has tits on it. Okay, let's get this battle started. Oh shit, in addition to weapons, the bad guys also brought the funk. Seriously, I think one of them has a disco ball for a shield. And these guys are about to find out that using swords and arrows against a resurrected Nazi war machine is not gonna end well for them. <laughs> See? Told ya. With all this chaos going on, hopefully Avatar has a plan to defeat Black Wolf. I'm too old for this sort of thing. Just wake me up when a planet's destroyed. There's our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Avatar just tried to I'm too old for this shit his way out of the plot. Actually, considering what we've seen in this movie so far, he probably could have just said I'm too old for this shit. Good thing Eleanor's able to motivate him. It ain't no fairyland out there, kid. But all right. Oh. Why don't you sit there for a couple hours while I figure it out? Okay. Uh, please tell me Avatar's not gonna start playing with his magic wand? They can't leave yet, though. Avatar's still gotta rename Black Wolf's assassin. I shall call him Peace. Peace. In the hopes that he will bring it. Listen, Avatar, I know your heart's in the right place, but Necron 99? Way cooler name. You should just keep calling him that. Well, at least Necron 99 seems to have taken to his new name quickly. Peace wants love. Wants free. Will help. Okay, is it me or does Peace kind of sound like Paul Stanley on Quaaludes? Peace wants love. Wants free. We wanted everybody to think we were famous and that we were very big, so we used to have amplifiers that were empty because we couldn't afford speakers. Alright, looks like we're ready for an unexpected journey. I wonder if I pack my scotch. Well, I remember to bring alcohol. While our heroes set off on their quest, things don't seem to be going well in Montagar. Even Elf Lincoln has been captured. But at least Black Wolf's troops still let their prisoners have some fun. Remember, fellas, the safe word is Frazetta. Back at his castle, Black Wolf is a little distracted since his wife is about to give birth and... Wait a second, Black Wolf has a wife? And she looks like an elf pinup? The fuck? Will my son be human or mutant? Mutant, the chart say. Do not have it killed, oh no! Uh, listen, not to be a homewrecker, but have you considered leaving Black Wolf? I mean, he's old, he's a Nazi, he doesn't have skin on his arms. You can do a lot better than him. I mean, you're still pretty young for an elf. You're, what, still in your 500s? Don't let the fact that you have kids fool you. You can still get it. So I say go on out there and find yourself some good elf dick. Boy, right now I'll bet our heroes really wish they could use technology so they could just drive to Black Wolf. Avatar, why is peace stopping? Very bad. Not good. Go around. Dude, don't say that about fairies. Eleanor's right there, asshole. You know, maybe they should have gone around. It looks like they've entered Fern Gully as envisioned by a drug addict. Plus, I think this one wants Weehawk to eat his ass. I can't tell if what's happening right now is real or if everybody just ate too much of the scenery. Stop this childish display. Why, even at elves' houses, I've seen more sophisticated magic. Yeah, none of you fairies have racks as awesome as my girlfriend, either. With all this going on, I don't blame Peace for leaving and trying to hook back up with his friends. Oh, and did I mention one of the fairies is voiced by none other than Luke freaking Skywalker? I'm Sean, leader of the Knights of Stardust, protectors of Dolan. We have prepared a feast to welcome you to our humble domain. Yes, that really is Mark Hamill as Sean, although the original voice he used was a little different. I'm crazy enough to take on Batman, but the IRS, no, thank you. Oh, and if you're wondering if Sean's going to be a major character for the rest of the movie... Assassin! Technology! Nope. What happens after this is a little confusing. All of a sudden it cuts to Eleanor captured somewhere else, then Avatar and Weehawk go to rescue her, and then it looks like Weehawk just entered the Phantom Zone. Was there a scene missing or did the animators just take one too many puffs of the background? Oh no, I'm greening out! Must put on Zeppelin's physical graffiti side 4 before I reach total freakage! 
Thankfully, he's saved by Peace, who lives up to his name by shooting the crap out of things. Meanwhile, not only has Eleanor been captured by the fairies, but she still seems really cold. Oh, and if anyone's wondering when my next Godzilla video is gonna be, here, this ought to help tide you over. Listen, Avatar, I appreciate you trying to reason with the fairies, but it's okay. I don't think Eleanor's in much danger. The fairies decide to let them go, and since Weehawk was just in Bong Hit World, might as well teleport these two to Cocaine Mountain. And what the hell are you doing, Avatar? You're making this just like a modern day PG animated movie. Hmm, at this point, the background seemed to have gone from Yes album covers to Bob Ross paintings. And maybe there's a happy little wizard and a perky-nipped fairy lady right there. Now that'll just be our little secret. Considering we've seen Avatar's magic can conjure objects out of thin air, now sure would be a good time for him to make a snowmobile. You could argue that's technology, but so is a friggin' jukebox. Oh my god. They're our own tracks. We've been moving in circles. Well, great. Now how are they going to find Weehawk in peace? Peace! Peace! We found him! We found him! Okay, that was convenient. And listen, we used up a lot of time showing these two walking. You think you could speed things up with some narration? The journey took them past the ruins of ancient civilizations. Strange beasts lurked about. Then finally, the desert. Ah, <sighs> thanks, exposition lady. It isn't very long before our heroes get captured again, and hey, 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 watch the hands there, buddy. No need to worry, though. Their leader's an old friend of Avatar's and invites our heroes to stay with them, although elf slave Leia here doesn't seem too happy about it. The elf general explains that he's stolen some guns from Black Wolf's troops and plans to attack his castle, but Avatar's upset that he's using technology. Well, I don't really blame them. I mean, that does go against their rules. That would be like if Avatar got help from one of Black Wolf's robots that also used guns and... Oh, right, I forgot. And listen, Peace, don't feel like you need to keep posing for 70s album artwork. Black Wolf is more than happy to help you out with that. Avatar! What's that? Oh shit, you're getting attacked by live action! Now's a chance for Peace to finally redeem himself and save his friends. Or not. Sorry, Peace, but being on the movie's poster isn't a guarantee you're gonna live to the end. Hell, your horse barely made it past ten minutes. And holy shit, turns out Eleanor's a Nazi! Eleanor! The betrayal of Eleanor to the quest has broken his heart. Nah, that's probably for the best. Eleanor was a little out of his league anyway. So while the elf army prepares to attack Black Wolf's castle, Weehawk and Avatar decide to break in separately. Although they might want to delay their attack, the backgrounds don't look like they're finished yet. Mm, how ugly. Hey, compared to something like Korean Tron, the animation in this movie is state of the art. Alright fellas, now that we've taken over this town, time to celebrate by giving ourselves some fairy chlamydia. How are these two gonna make it to Black Wolf? No more wars, you fools! Love! Look, real beautiful present! Remember how in World War II the Nazis were defeated using love and flowers? Neither do I, because they were actually defeated with violence. See? Weehawks got the right idea. So while these two make their way to the castle, the elf army prepares to battle Black Wolf's forces, and it's less like something from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and more like an acid flashback. Time to see who will win the final battle between the cast of Elf Quest and stock footage from other movies. Good god, this is like watching a teenager's heavy metal posters fight each other. And once again, rated PG. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna use this final battle to show the difference between a PG animated movie then and a PG animated movie now. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold you back anymore. I just wanna say you're a great dad and just a a real articulate fella. Ah, oh, well, that is high praise. Hi, Dory! Ahoy there! <laughs> Do you want to play hide and seek? Okay.
Black Wolf gains the upper hand when he uses the projector again, but it's important to remember, projectors don't kill people, people kill people. Avatar decides to face Black Wolf alone while Weehawk goes to destroy the projector, but what about Eleanor? Weehawk! E.G. Besides, no need to worry, Eleanor's got an excuse for why she betrayed you. Apparently. I could not help it. When I touched peace in the desert, Black Wolf trapped my mind. Alright, good enough for me. Ah, who am I kidding? I can't stay mad at those... Uh, I mean... You. And hey look, Black Wolf's wife is back, and she's gone again. Hopefully Avatar is able to defeat Black Wolf. He's still pissed about Avatar Indian burning his arms off when they were kids. Get ready for a wizard's duel to end all wizard's duels. One more thing. I'm glad you changed your last name, you son of a bitch. Yeah, that's what you get for bringing magic to a gunfight, bitch. Of course, using a gun kinda goes against the whole anti-technology argument, but whatever, bad guy defeated. And I mean all the bad guys are defeated. Immediately after Avatar shoots Black Wolf, the castle collapses, the projector explodes, and Black Wolf's army just gives up. All in less than a minute. The projector destroyed. The battle was over. Alright, that sure wrapped up quickly. At least with Bakshi's Lord of the Rings movie, he had the excuse that he only made it halfway through the story. Good work, fellas. Unfortunately, because this is PG Bakshi, the orgy scene will have to be cut. Well, at least with Black Wolf dead, the movie's backgrounds are now more consistent with the character designs. Come on, let's make it. Avatar. <laughs> Unfortunately, just like his hat, Avatar suffered from erectile dysfunction and was forced to cast a Cialis spell. The end. By the way, I just realized this movie was put out by Fox, which is now owned by Disney, so does that mean Eleanor is now a Disney princess? Because I actually wouldn't mind seeing that happen. Although not as popular as Fritz the Cat, Wizards was still a success at the box office, making $9 million against a $2 million budget, and it went on to become a midnight movie favorite in the years after its release, although weirdly, fans had to make an online petition in order to get Fox to release the movie on DVD. Even Queen Kong got a DVD release despite no one asking. You're telling me this movie needed a petition? It may also seem weird that Bakshi described Wizards as him being family friendly, but honestly, in Ralph Bakshi's world, this is family friendly. I mean, the guy made the world's first X-rated animated film. He was never going to be genteel. Animation-wise, Wizards is fairly crude, but it's also unmistakably Bakshi, and the use of different techniques helps give it a trippy, almost surreal quality. The film's also an unusual mix of styles, and I'm not just talking about the animation. Is it supposed to be fantasy, sci-fi, goofy, gritty, for kids, not for kids? It's definitely a weird movie, but that's also what makes it interesting. And besides, if you were expecting something conventional from the guy who directed Coonskin, that's your own fault. This isn't my favorite Bakshi movie. Personally, I think he's better doing more adult, urban-oriented movies. But it is a pretty good place to start if you're looking to get into Bakshi, but don't want to dive into his more hardcore stuff. And while I usually hate the fact that everything's getting remade nowadays, I would love it if somebody made a movie like this today, gave it a PG rating, and marketed it as a family-friendly animated feature. The angry emails from parents alone would make it worth it. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Fritz? Fritz, get up for God's sake, get up! They've killed Fritz! Uh -huh.